This is a, a one-time opportunity for all you ghosts to, to really wreak some havoc and damage on somebody who claims to be a ghost investigator. This is it. If you're tired of all those ghost investigation shows that are on every network seemingly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including ours, this is it. I am the avatar for everyone who's ever been a ghost investigator. This is your chance to get back at all of us. Drop it. You got nothing. I bet you got nothing. back in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Waverly Inn. Indeed. Gorgeous weather. Yeah, lovely. You yeah. know, I actually hear this place might be haunted by Oscar Wilde. Really? Mm. I could believe anything, provided that it is quite incredible. You're going to do that all night? I am. I'm going to quote Oscar Wilde all night. Fantastic. All right. Just so I'm prepared. I feel inspired. It's about time. After you. <laughs> Very good. This is gorgeous. Hi. Hi. Holly. Calvin Blades. Nice Calvin, to nice to meet you. Hi, Calvin. Paul. Hi. Nice. Welcome to the Waverly Inn. Thanks very much. It looks lovely. Thank you. We're here, we're here. It's haunted. That's why we're here. Oh, <laughs> yes. We certainly have heard those stories too. So there's, um, from the, the materials I read, there's three rooms that are, are supposedly particularly haunted. There are. Yeah. You want to go shuck our coats off and uh, get comfortable, and then Calvin, if you can give us a tour of those three rooms, that'd be great. Absolutely. All right. Let's go. For a shock. <laughs> The Waverly Inn was built as a private home in Halifax's South End in 1866. In 1870, the house was sold to two spinsters who turned the property into one of Halifax's finest hotels. These days, however, its most famous guests may be the ghosts that are rumored to haunt the property, which made it the perfect location for Holly and I to conduct an investigation in the fall of 2009. So this is the Oscar Wilde room, eh? The Oscar Wilde room? The room he stayed in uh, in uh, 1882. How long was he here for? Uh, it was about four or five days. Next door to the hotel was the Halifax Ladies College, kind of a fine finishing school. So he did, uh, sold out poetry readings every night there. Nice. Yes, poetry yeah. readings. Yes. <laughs> That's why exactly he was why. Here. He's here. Um, the only way to resist temptation is to yield to it. <laughs> oh well, and there's the man himself, or at least a picture of the man. You say a lot of writers come here, like to hang out, which makes sense, but what kind of sort of paranormal things do they report here, if anything at all? Um, just um, a lot of people that mention it to us uh, say that they, they experience a, a positive uh, feeling, a positive spirit, um, and people that are coming here, sort of from the arts community for um, writing or filmmaking or whatever, tend to feel that it's more or less a... Uh, um, you know, a, a, a recharge and invigorating kind of experience um, in, in this room in particular. Yeah. This is where I should come to write my next feature. <laughs> I was just going to suggest that we could put you in here and see if you get inspired by anything. Just sort of, well, I'd get inspired by Oscar Wilde. After we left the Oscar Wilde room, we interviewed one of the staff members about a ghostly Victorian era lady who she had seen in the adjoining hallway. I had seen a lady, it appeared that she was looking out the window. Um, and then as I come down the stairs more, she turned and started coming towards me. But uh, that's when I realized, well, I guess I didn't realize at that point, but uh, that it wasn't a person. <laughs> as she came closer, there became a light that at first I thought was coming from the door, but it was a gray day. And then yeah, as more I looked, it seemed to have come from within her or from just behind her. And it was just kind of from the shoulders up. After we finished the interview, I decided to head up to the hallway to take some baseline EMF readings. In this lovely hallway, which is apparently haunted by a woman, an apparition, she appears. Well, that was weird. Ah. Well, 
Well, there's a nice little slope to this hallway. Dips down, comes back up between lights. Yeah, that gives you a bit of a weird sensation. Changes your perspective slightly. I don't think it would make you see a, you know, full-bodied woman, but uh, definitely interesting. Other than the uneven floor, I didn't find anything unusual about the hallway, and the EMF levels were all normal. So I decided to go back downstairs and rejoin Paul and Calvin, who are about to enter the first of the other two allegedly haunted rooms. Okay, room 119. Very nice. So what, uh, what's the story with this room? Uh, this room has had a, a couple of guests uh, mention that uh, in the bed they either see a, a lady sitting on the bottom of the bed uh, and also there was a, a woman laying in bed that uh, saw an impression of a body moving next to her. Where does the bed come from? Uh, this bed uh, we bought off of uh, eBay uh, from California. And do you, do you know anything about the background of the bed or where it's uh, originally from? Or? Uh, no, they just, uh, it, it was, uh, I guess, certified mid-1800s from Holland. Okay, so it's, so if there is, who knows, maybe there was a ghost on the bed. Attached to the, the bed, bed. Yeah. yeah. Careful what you buy on the <laughs> internet. Um, it may come with spirits. <laughs> yeah. So we've got apparitions in this room, we've got indentations in the mattress, things moving. Perfect. Sounds exciting. Right. You so excited? I, Somewhat excited. <laughs> yeah. Better be excited. Uh, um, I'm just thinking I can buy a bed on the internet. That's great. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the next room. That's the takeaway message. Yeah, let's, let's go to the room. next one. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So this is room 103. Welcome to 103. And this is the room with the painting that falls off the wall. The painting that refuses to stay up. And how many times would you say you've you've come in and found it? Uh, th three for sure, three uh, for my, sure. myself. And other people have also found it in that state? Uh, yeah, housekeeping have found it. So now when the, the painting is found, obviously the glass is always broken because it's fallen to the floor. The first time, actually, the glass didn't break. Oh, fantastic. It was flat down on the, the mat, unscathed. Was the wiring broke on the back at all? No, the wiring and, and the hook on the wall were... Still there. Mm. So, is there anything else going on here, or is it is the painting the? Uh, the painting uh, is the main thing, and this room again, it was sort of the similar sort of uh, uh, female guest mentioning about um, uh, a, a female sitting on the the bottom of the bed. Another yeah. lady. So there's been another female seen in this room as well. Mm -hmm. Um, do you know, based off the descriptions, whether or not they were similar from the one on the upper floor? The yeah the. The description generally is, uh, not for every um, um, guest comment, but uh, older woman, uh, long flowing hair uh, with a gown or, or nightgown type apparel. Is this the same woman that was seen in the upper hallway? It sounds like. Okay. I just have one more question. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> is she single? <laughs> is it kind of, how old? No, it's not. Your Again, really? <laughs> um, the painting. Do you know anything about the background of the painting? No, and it was just another uh, something that we picked up at an antique auction for the room, and uh, we don't know the history behind it or who owned it before we bought it. Any kind of date on it? Do you think? Um, Again, mostly we didn't really buy. Everything was kind of Victorian period, 1880, mm -hmm. 1890. So that's somewhere the, from there. But as much as we know, it did have the original wavy antique glass, which mm, no longer exists. It's too bad. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff that you, it seems that you have here in the hotel, the bed in room 115, the painting here, um, is not original to the hotel. It's stuff that you acquire from elsewhere. Right. Yeah, the hotel went through a bit of a, a rocky period in the 40s and 50s, and uh, everything that was of value kind of got stripped away, light fixtures, furniture. Uh, so when uh, we went to restore it, it was sort of starting from scratch. So in the meantime, you may have acquired a whole bunch of different paranormal entities. When Ghost Cases returns, Holly and I each take a room and try to make contact with the ghosts of the Waverly Inn. Come hither, ghosts.
Holly and I begin our investigation of the historic Waverly Inn in Halifax, Nova Scotia. After our tour of the inn, Holly and I decided to split up. The Oscar Wilde room was occupied for the evening, so that left us with room 103, where I sat down to hang out with the allegedly haunted painting, and room 115, where Holly set up her audio recorder and her EMF meter. Hmm. All right, so in this room, we had one guest who was lying in bed, I guess, and woke up and there was a indentation on the bed, which wasn't so unusual because she'd been there with her husband earlier, but he apparently had already gone down to breakfast and apparently she saw the, the bed actually move around her. That's a little disconcerting, I won't lie. And another woman reported seeing a lady sitting on the end of her bed. Definitely strange. So, EMF reader. What I like about Holly and I conducting separate investigations is that it gives each of us the opportunity to employ our own individual methodology. Holly uses science and shows real compassion for any ghost that might actually be present, whereas I use, well, let's just say I have a different way of doing things. It's an interesting question. Of the three women in that painting, which one would I be most interested in? The one in the center is probably the least good looking, but she can play the piano, or at least it looks like she can play the piano. That's intriguing. She's got musical talent. I used to be a musician. The one on the right looks to be some sort of strawberry blonde redhead, and she's got music in her hands, which indicates that she probably has no musical talent whatsoever, but she's just going to pass it to the girl in the middle. But perhaps she has other talents. Yeah, reading and writing and such. And the one on the left seems to be with a violin. And so she's probably got musical talent too. I'm going to go with the one on the left. She's got that dark red dress. I like it. wonder if she's here. Okay. There. Come hither, ghosts. I wonder what Holly's doing up in 115. Probably lying on a bed. Sitting in a chair, doing the same thing I'm doing, except not reading Oscar Wilde. Come hither, ghost, and ravish me with thy spirit. That's the difference between Holly and I. She'd say something poetic like that, and I'd just say, Hey, baby, let's get it on. Female ghost hanging out on the end of the bed. She's probably lonely. Paul should probably be here, not me. It's the difference between going to the opera and a pro wrestling match. Holly's the opera, I'm pro wrestling. Assume, a little assume, that if there is a lost soul, if, if you believe in that thing, that if there is a lost soul trapped or connected in this room, stuck somehow in this plane, linked to perhaps even this bed frame, that that would get a little boring thinking. Nope, pretty sure it would. Because I've only been here, oh, just kidding, 30 minutes. So, if there is something that's linked to this room, or to this bed, I have to get lonely. 
I'm here. You can come, you can come say hi. Sometimes you should tempt fate because fate is single. And if you tempt fate, fate might say yes, and then you've got a date with fate, which is kind of poetry Oscar Wilde might have written when he was really, really drunk. I have a date, what runs with date, date, fate, with fate. And then he'd pass out in a gutter somewhere. But if I'm to tempt fate in here, I've got a room where the painting has fallen off. It's actually kind of a heavy painting too. Fallen off and landed down here several times. So I'm thinking maybe I've annoyed the ghosts just enough to get them to do something. Put my life on the line here for ghost investigation. Hanging out on a bed. Waiting for a ghost lady to say hello. It's a new song. Just wrote that. I mean, how many people actually want to interact with the paranormal? Probably not a whole lot. You'd think, given the opportunity, you might come out and say hi. You can feed off some of the energy from the lights, you know, the camera. Feed off that. Be okay. Feel free to manifest. I'm going to set the camera up. I'm going to lie down on the floor. Right here, right underneath the painting where it's fallen. And I'm going to spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes lying on the floor. We're going to see if that painting falls. This is my dare. If you were out there, ghosts, the spinsters or Oscar Wilde or whatever ghost might be here, I'd be pretty ticked off if I was dead and stuck here. I really would. So I would want to take it out on the people that were still alive and enjoying their lives here. And I would really want to take it out on somebody like me, who was sort of challenging you and daring you. So this is what I'm doing. It's a new segment that I've just created, and it's called Ghost Dare. And, you know, sort of also called, does Paul do something stupid that will turn him into a ghost as well? So I'm going to lie on the floor. I'm just going to wait for the ghost to drop the painting on top of me. And, uh, and I dare you. I dare you, ghosts of the Waverly Inn. Drop that painting on top of me. Bring it on. Bring it on, I say. I bet you got nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing. Come on. So we're going to, you know, Holly's probably up in room 115 just, just sitting there doing her thing. But I'm taking it that extra yard. Because frankly, nothing's happening. So I'm going to see if I can make something happen. As I was devising a new scheme to annoy any ghosts that might be present, Holly continued to employ her less confrontational approach. I just heard something that sounded like a woman cry. No. Whatever it is, it's gone. It is kind of a heavy painting. Well, if it falls on me, I hope at least it's the chick in the red dress that lands on me. Because it would be apropos that maybe it's the hat that kills me. When Ghost Cases returns, I put my life in the hands of the ghosts of the Waverly Inn. It's not a see-through hat. I can't see anything. This is a little weird. Holly and I conclude our investigation of the Waverly Inn with some surprising results. Next to me here, you can see a mirror which we've used, it's lying on the floor too, it's pointing up at the painting. We can, this is the painting that has repeatedly fallen onto the floor right where I am now. So, <clears throat> what my dare is to the ghosts of the Waverly Inn, if there are ghosts, is drop that painting. Bring it on. Drop the painting on me. I'm gonna lie here for about 15 minutes. You've got 15 minutes to drop that sucker right on top of me. If you do, if you ghosts do that, we will have achieved a couple of things. One, probably kill me. At the very least, I mean, that's a heavy painting. You could do some serious damage. You know, I could block it, but still, some damage. And two, you'll prove that you're really here. And 
Isn't that what it's all about? Shouldn't we have proof? And so this is the way to find the proof. We're not talking about orbs flying across, you know, that could be dust or insects. We're not talking about sounds that you pick up on a, on a digital recorder that, yeah, maybe it's a talking dog or Satan or a, or a baby, but it, it could also just be something in the woodwork or a pipe. Nope, we're talking about real evidence. And folks, there is nothing realer in television land than a very heavy painting falling off the wall and landing on the host's head. So, ghost dare. I am daring the ghosts. Not just of room 103, but of this entire property. And you know what? If there's ghosts down the street, come on down. This is a, a one-time opportunity for all you ghosts to, to really wreak some havoc and damage on somebody who claims to be a ghost investigator. This is it. If you're tired of all those ghost investigation shows that are on every network seemingly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including ours, this is it. I am the avatar for everyone who's ever been a ghost investigator. This is your chance to get back at all of us. Drop it. You got nothing. I bet you got nothing. If I had known what Paul was up to, I would have tried to stop him. Although in the past, I've found that he'll usually forge ahead regardless. I guess this is one of the reasons I do like him. His willingness to seek out an experience and challenge his own skepticism, even if I don't always agree with the way he goes about it. Maybe the ghosts are thinking, oh, he's watching the painting. And as soon as he sees it start to move, he'll put his hands up or he'll roll out. You got a point there. That's probably what I do. So I'm going to give you a free shot. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to count to 20, maybe 21. If I'm feeling lucky, 22, but no more. This is your shot. 22 seconds. Here it comes. Actually, you know what? They make fun of me for wearing this hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hat because it would be apropos that maybe it's the hat that kills me. So I'm just going to put the hat down over my eyes. It's not a see-through hat. I can't see anything. This is a little weird. A little bit afraid here. Come on, ghosts. You got 22 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Losers. 11. 12. Cowards. 13. 14. If you're the spinsters, you were ugly. 15. 16. No man ever thought you were attractive. 17. 18. You probably smelled funny too. 19. 20. Drop the painting. 21. Last opportunity, Oscar Wilde, ghost chicks, spinsters, anything. If you've got anything, this is your chance. Do I feel the painting shake a little? Ah, 22. Still here. Incidentally, I don't recommend that you try this at home. Nothing paranormal seemed to happen to Holly and I at the Waverly Inn, despite our best efforts to make contact. It was only later, when we reviewed the audio recorder that Holly had with her in room 115, that we realized the voices she thought she had heard might actually have been real, and that there may be something to the ghost stories of the Waverly Inn after all. As it turned out, Holly's conversational approach to ghost investigation was more productive than my confrontational methods this time. Luckily for me. Drop it. Not looking. Come on, drop it. 